Hey everybody, what's going on? So I was just uh, reading through some uh, posts. I decided to go through uh, Christia Freeland's uh, ex account just because, well, I haven't really covered her for a while and it's kind of slow during the summer with no question period and whatnot. So I thought, hey, I wonder if she's uh, been lying on Twitter lately and go figure, I found something here. So, so she says, since 2020, Can Can Canada's economy has created 1.3 million more jobs recovered 141% in jobs lost to the pandemic. That's a weird number. Fairness for every generation means more good paying jobs, especially union wage jobs for Canadians. Now, before I go into what I said and what I have to say about this, I just, I do want to give another shout out to Northern Perspective. who says we're about to hit a recession and you are bragging about the economy with the, uh, the meme of the little girl who's looking all confused. Um, so again, shout out to Northern Perspective. They do a great job. Go check them out if you haven't already. They're, they they claim they're not journalists, but in my opinion, they're the best or some of the best that Canada has to offer in terms of whether you want to call it journalism or political commentary, whatever you want to call them, uh, go check them out. Um, so back to uh, Christian Freeland. What I had to say about this uh, ridiculous statement that she made was that wages are stagnant. How do you recover 41% jobs than you lost, right? The whole 141%. Like, how do you recover more than that? Am I, what am I missing here? Let me know in the comment section. Um, and I also said that we need good unions who negotiate higher wages. Bringing down the cost of living also helps with this as a good wage can be subdued by insanely high rent prices, right? 19 bucks an hour, which is what I make at work, what used to be pretty damn good money, even just 10, 15 years ago, right? Because you could... You know, 15 years ago, I, I was literally renting a, a, an apartment in Burlington, Ontario, by the lake. $750. If you make around two grand a month, you can afford that. That same apartment, by the way, right now is about $1,600. I know that because I checked a few months ago. <laughs> okay, it, it's insane how much rent has gone up. So $19 an hour doesn't get you much anymore. It used to get you a lot. So yeah, you can take a good wage, like, you know, 20 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour, especially for the last 20 years has always been looked at like, okay, you're making pretty good money. Well, you're not really making pretty good money anymore. If you're making 20, because they're taking it all rents, taking it all groceries, taxes, it's just it's ridiculous. Um, so you know, <laughs> and like Northern Perspective said, you know, it's like we're about to hit a recession. There's also a massive housing bubble that will burst probably sometime in 2025. And you're bragging? It's it is weird, right? I mean, it's just. But what do you expect, right? It's the the liberal NDP coalition. Every single person who belongs to that coalition is an absolute liar. We all know that. Or well, I hope you all know that by now. Uh, now she also said, yeah, it's, it wasn't just one tweet. She she embarrasses herself quite a bit these days. So she says Canada needs more homes. That's why we are going to build four million more of them. Housing starts went up 16% in July. This is good news and a step towards putting owner, home ownership back in reach of younger generations. So, okay, a couple things here. Canada needs more homes. Yes. We also need a managed border. Yes. <laughs> right. Then she also says we're going to build 4 million homes. Now, the Liberals have said they're going to do this in the next four to five years. Now, they're, of course... This would be this would assume that they are going to win the next election, which I promise you they will not. But even if they did, four million homes, they did the math on this. It's like it's like a house or more than a house every minute. There's no way they're doing that. They would have to build what you know five hundred or six hundred thousand houses every year. They're only on pace to build like two three hundred thousand this year. So I mean, they're just blatantly lying to you. Now the second part of this is. This is good news and a step towards putting home ownership back in reach of younger generations. Why is it out of reach in the first place? Who put it out of reach in the first place? It was the liberals. You could, if you go back and look at the, the chart of like rent in, increases and housing price increases, there was an increase under Harper, but nothing like this. I mean, we have seen housing prices, rent prices, just more than double in the past 15 years. It's insane. If this happens again in the next 15 years, so instead of a 1,501 bedroom apartment, it's three grand, we're screwed. 
Like, we don't have that much time left to really get this under control or else you're going to just wipe out an entire class of people. If you're in the middle class right now, you're on your way to being poor. Just like they want. And unfortunately, do I trust that Pierre Polyev doesn't feel the exact same way? No, I don't. I do think that there has been a plan for a long time to get rid of the middle class so that you're either going to be rich or poor, and most of us will be poor. I don't know if I believe if Pierre Polyev, Pierre Polyev wants to see anything different. He says he does, which is great. He does pander a lot, but is he, does he mean what he's saying, right? I'm still going to vote for him. I'm going to give him a chance, but he's got to make huge strides in terms of not just housing, but affordable housing, managing the border, temporarily shutting it down completely because we have so many more people than we can handle right now deport the ones who co uh, commit violent crimes get rid of some of these tax like there's a lot of work to do but there, th this kind of work can be done and he can make huge strides within the first year and a half two years of his uh, administration if he keeps his promises i hope he does and i know i sound really repetitive but i don't fully trust him i just don't trust any politicians the only politician i trust in all of North America, maybe even the world, is Robert Kennedy Jr. And he's not running here in Canada. We don't have anyone like him here in Canada. So, unfortunately, the closest thing to that, the closest thing to me, who's like a center-left type of person, is the center-right, which is what Pierre Polyev is pandering to. So, again, I hope he hears this. I would eventually love to meet him one day and kind of talk to him and ask him some difficult questions. But if he does hear this... Mr. Polyev, I just really hope that you hear what I'm saying because millions of tens of millions of Canadians are going to be saying the same thing once you get into prime minister. What are you going to do to fix things? We have, we've already heard some of your plans. We like what you're saying. Please follow through with them. Make people like me trust politicians again. Don't know if you will, but I hope you do. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments section about Christian Freeland. What do you also think about Pierre Polyev? Do you think he'll keep his promises? Uh, but also, I, I do want to hear what you guys have to say about Christian Freeland because it's been a while since I've, you know, caught her lying and embarrassing herself. Um, but again, it's, it's pretty easy to catch because every time she talks, she is lying and embarrassing herself. So let me know what you guys think about that. I always appreciate you commenting on these videos. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe. I really, really appreciate every single one of you who does as it really helps grow this channel. Uh, thanks again so much for watching, guys, and I'll be back shortly with another video.